It must have been cold there in my shadow. It was a pleasure seeing Kim Dunson again, the lady I cannot say no to. If she comes to see you, be careful. <laughs> As I walked over here this afternoon, I talked to Mr. McDaniel and I asked him if I told him about the connection that Francis and I had. As I often do when I come home from work, I go on Ancestry.com because I, it, it helps me to relax and escape. And so uh, for those of you who are tree huggers, I call myself, uh, when you go on Ancestry.com, if there's a little hint for you, there's, there's a little leaf that wiggles. And so I looked at it and there was a, a gentleman named Paige Wainwright who was my great uncle. And he was a barber in town in Salisbury, not too far away from here. And I looked at the census record from 1930 or so. And I looked down the list and there was a name of a person that didn't share his last name, but the last name was Bibbins. And I said, wait a minute, what do you mean Bibbins? And it was Ellen Bibbins. And I said, well, let me see who she is. And so I found out she's that, that was North her uh, Francis's aunt. Uh, who was living with my great uncle. Yeah, she was a hairdresser, and my uncle, as I said, was a barber, but he had a boarding house, and so no doubt she was working alongside him, and so it became even more special to me that not only did we share a passion for history, but we shared um, some family connections. Your generosity is being honored in a building named after one of the university's most noted philanthropists, Mr. Richard F. Hazel. You now join the ranks of Mr. Hazel and others who have shown their love for this great university and the students whom we serve. We should also look upon this occasion as a love story about a man who remained devoted to his late wife, Frances Lattimore. Through your love, you have forever extended her memories and her passion for black history on the Eastern Shore. The School of the Arts and Professions will do all that we can to encourage our students to take up the torch and delve into Mrs. Lattimore's extensive writings about the Eastern Shore. Those of you who did not know Frances, B as she was known to family and friends, we married in 1977 and had a heck of a time, a wild ride. And I was always impressed, more impressed over time by her actions and by her thoughts and deeds. She taught me a lot. And that was pretty good because at 47, captain in the police department. I didn't think anybody could teach me anything. You know, I, I knew it all. I was the half full guy, the half empty guy, and she was the half full person. But yet we found a common ground. She taught me so much. Wherever you went with her, invariably she had a notebook and a pencil looking for information. We went to Macy's one day in Brooklyn having something gift wrapped. And the guy that was doing the gift wrapping, she asked him, where are you from? I used to get angry when she did that because I really wasn't interested in where people were from and hardly interested in where they were going. You know, I had other things on my mind. And sure enough, this guy was from the Eastern Shore. I said, well, I lost a major part of my life. I flew airplanes and rode motorcycles when I met B. She had never been on a motorcycle and never been in a small airplane. Well, she loved riding motorcycles, and she even got so that she liked flying in the airplane. And one day we were flying to New York, and I said, you know, babe, you should know more, because if I should have a heart attack or a stroke, it'd be a shame for you to scream all the way down. <laughs> You've got to learn how to level the wings, get on the radio. She said, okay, I can do that. 
And she did. We sent her off to school, and she became a pinch hitter. And before you know it, she was reading off checklists with her headphones on, like my son who flies the big iron. She was like a first officer. It was great, you know? B had a few passions, family, friends, close friends, and history, genealogy. She had a thirst for that type of knowledge. I don't know where she got the energy from. I never could figure it out. Always digging, always looking. If she was your friend, you had a real solid friend. He was loyal and, and just, just fantastic. I used to kid her. I'm 13 years older than B. When we got married, she was 35. And I told her, I said, you know, we were talking with her. I said, you know, you really lucked out. She said, what do you mean? I said, well, when I married you, my cutoff was 33. <laughs> I said, but, <laughs> you know, I kind of took another look and I said, yeah, you deserved a couple extra points, so you got them. So she just looked at me and smiled and said, well, I kind of remembered the different way. And I said, yeah, how's that? She says, well, old man, I think you were pretty darn lucky, you know. <laughs> you really had no comeback for that. In fact, I watched a, a special about Arthur Ashe last Saturday on TV. She and Arthur Ashe shared one tragic event. Arthur Ashe had a heart attack, he went to the hospital, and they gave him blood. And they slipped him HIV along with it. B had a transfusion in Staten Island in the hospital before we met, and they gave her a little present to take home with, and that was hepatitis C, which there is no cure. So we ended up in Atlanta, Georgia. In spite of her age, 70 years old, after they interviewed her, she went right to the head of the list. She was dynamic, she was productive, and those are the type of people that they look for. Well, the next day, they brought her the sort of t-shirt that said, I survived, I got the guarantee of life. Now we're on another high, because we're going back to the Eastern Shore, and I'm going to buy that Harley, and we're going to have a fall. We're planning it. So one day she looked at me. She said, you think you're pretty smart, don't you? I said, well, I'm doing what I have to do, you know? I said, well, why? She said, well, I'm thinking about buying you a stethoscope and a white coat. And she said, you really think you were something then, wouldn't you? <laughs> we laughed about it. But uh, that was B. Because people would say, do you have a problem with genealogy? Call Frances Latimer. She can probably help you. And I'd watch her on the phone. She's getting weaker all the time. And she never turned anybody down. And invariably, she'd end up with, no, I think we can do that. She was a tremendous lady, vibrant. I miss her dearly. I'm so proud of what the university is doing here. And I look forward to, <coughs> I'm optimistic about the future. I hope that some young person or persons will come forward will have some of that fire that she had, some of that thirst for knowledge and, and history. I really am I'm banking on that. And I, I'm hopeful it will happen. So that's my little story about Frances Bivens, quite a lady. Must have been cold there in my shadow To never have sunlight on your face You've been content to let me shine You always walked a step behind I was the one with all the glory You were the one with all the strength 
Only a face without a name I never once heard you complain Did you ever know that you're my hero And everything I would like to be can fly higher than an eagle Cause you are the wind beneath my wings might have appeared to go unnoticed But I've got it all here in my heart I want you to know I know the truth I would be nothing without you You're my hero And everything I would like to be Oh, I can fly higher than an eagle Cause you are the wind beneath my wings